Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Dean's Hobby Stop in Owasso, Michigan. Dean's has one of the Midwest's largest selections of used kits at great prices. They also feature new kits and supplies as well. Call Dean's to get their mail order list featuring hundreds of vintage kits or check their website for great deals on both new and classic models. Thanks for joining us at Right On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Northrop Snark SM-62 Intercontinental Guided Missile Kit. It's a 181 scale kit, a vintage unit from Ravel, that's number 85-7810 in the current catalog. It was originally released in the late 50s and re-released in 2011, but it's still readily available at online auction sites. It's a skill level 2 kit for the intermediate builder and comes with a launch platform and ground crewman. It features a positionable launch ramp with a detailed base, two ground figures, and twin jettisonable booster rockets and authentic U.S. Air Force decal markings. It's molded in color with about 30 pieces and includes colorful water slide decals and instructions. Deployed from 59 to 1961, the Snark was launched from a platform by two solid fueled rocket booster engines and then it switched to an internal turbojet engine for the rest of the flight. It had a ceiling of about 55,000 feet and a speed of about 650 miles an hour with a maximum range of 5,500 nautical miles. It carried a nuclear warhead and used a complicated celestial navigation system. It also had the ability to return for a landing on the skid strip at Cape Canaveral's Air Force Station for reuse. Here are the kit's contents. It comes with a nice instruction set and some really great decals but I strongly suggest that you use some setting solution to help the decals conform to contours. Some of them are a little difficult to place. Also, you may find that uh, we'll be using Model Master liquid cement for most of the construction. And for sometimes we'll also use a little super glue if we need some extra strength. But as always, um, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines whenever you use any of the products that you see or hear mentioned in the review. Get the left and right fuselage halves out of the kit and notice that uh, on the right half, part number one, there's some pin marks left there from the molding process. So you'll need to um, cut those off or sand them off uh, in order to make them uh, less noticeable and and uh, smooth out that surface. I used some liquid cement to um, apply to all of the perimeter of the seams and uh, where the fuselage halves go together and then um, I placed them together and then started wrapping them with some rubber bands uh, and then finally you want to shift and match all of the seams to the best position possible uh, and then let it set and dry. Now locate the four pieces for the booster rockets and sand off the pin marks just like the fuselage halves and then glue these together and match up the edges so you get the best possible surface. I deviated from the instruction sequence here to assemble the two, two fuel tanks, that's parts 7 and 8, and you'll need to prep those the same way as the fuselage and the um, rocket boosters. They've got some pin marks and some flash you may need to sand off and smooth out. If you locate and take a look at the center of the wing, there's a circular feature there that I think may be uh, a fuel port. Anyway, I use a small rotary tool to smooth out the um, pin mark in the middle of it and a little filler to make it smooth. And then I glued the fuel pods to the wing assembly. With these main pieces put together, you'll notice that in addition to the pin marks, etc., and flash, there also are, of course, the uh, ubiquitous seams that will need to be filled and addressed. Now, one way to uh, help with that is to put a little masking tape alongside the seam that you're working on to keep from destroying 
uh, any of the raised uh, rivets and panel lines uh, and keep that to a minimum. Uh, but if you're making a contest build, you'll have to address those uh, at this time. Once you're satisfied with your seam work, Apply a couple of nice even coats of sandable primer to the fuselage, wing assembly, and Jada units. Those are the uh, boosters. And give them a light sanding with 1000 grit sandpaper and wipe them clean with a soft cloth. And set them up to paint uh, for the color coat by letting them air dry. Start your color coats with some very light uh, coats. Just enough to tack and then uh, add a little bit more on the second coat. And then add a couple of wet coats until you get a nice even coloration on the whole uh, unit. Now, for this kit, I used Krylon Banner Red. Uh, it's just a, almost a perfect match for the actual color. And it looks good on the main body. Now, let those parts dry, overnight at least. And a few days is better if you don't have an accelerator. So go ahead and let that set and get ready for the next section. I painted the pinout tube aluminum color and installed it on the front of the fuselage. Here I noticed what appeared to be an error in the molding. It looks as though the piece that, that uh, comprises the air scoop, part 5, is basically upside down when matched to the uh, tab that's in the fuselage. So I had to round that out a little bit. And that is so I could um, fit it in there uh, properly in the proper orientation. And as it turns out, that um, is pretty important because the trailing edge of the air scoop there um, is mated to one of the uh, decals that goes right up to it. So you have to put that in a proper position and use the uh, box art and, and the model here to uh, determine exactly where that uh, goes when you um, uh, remove the um, the D uh, pins there and put it in uh, manually. The decals are the key to a, a great looking model here. They actually fit pretty well overall, uh, but there are some adjustments that you may have to make. And uh, if you follow the instructions, um, they show pretty well exactly where the decals go. So take your time, use plenty of warm water, and uh, use that also for placement not just to get them off the backing, but um, then smooth them out and use some decal setting solution to make them conform to the contours of the body. In my kit, the uh, base for the launch pad was a little bit warped, and it has a few challenges to make it look competitive if you're building this for contests. Um, for the purposes of a diorama, you might be better off to actually scratch build the metal rails and you, uh, to use it, you should fill some of the ink marks that I show here in the white circles. And then uh, remove the nib in the center ring, the white arrow. And then sand off the nameplate decal locator. Alternatively, you could cut off the release latch, the feature between the white circles. And lay down a piece of uh, thin sheet stock to cover most of the molding issues and replace the latch. Then after you decide what to do with that piece, Spray it uh, a medium gray. You should also be aware that um, I use the suggested paint scheme here for the entire model. And I've seen museum pieces uh, where the snark itself was all white. Um, but um, that's up to you. Use your historical references to, uh, to paint and uh, detail the kit as you see fit. I just used what was in the uh, kit suggestion for this one. After the gray paint had dried, I um, painted the um, portions you see taped off here, uh, the metal, uh, like the aluminum rails and steel rails, with a, a silver color in order to make them appear more realistic. Assemble the two halves of the uh, fueling tank, as you see here, and then smooth out the seam with some sand sticks and some putty. The fueling tank here uh, like you see with a gray finish uh, to match the launch launch base and then some details uh, can be added to the front panel um, I painted the inset black and, and some of the knobs there are uh, silver and then add the decals at this point to avoid having to manipulate them into position uh, after they've been obstructed by the rest of the launch pad I painted the parts on the trees uh, uh, for the launch pad. 
You can paint most of them except for the connection points and then touch those up afterwards. They could have been sprayed with primer first because it took a couple of extra coats, but um, it did work out with a dark yellow uh, tester's bottle paint to get a nice uh, good yellow uh, coloration for the launch pad. Now you can add the uh, tank, the ladder, the platform, and the rails there uh, uh, to complete step five for the launch pad. I also detailed the launch latch with uh, some black paint. I added some detail to the launcher bearing support panel. That's part number 24. Using a toothpick and uh, to highlight the dial gauges with some silver paint. Or you could use gauge decals from the aftermarket to make them appear even more functional. Now you can assemble the pieces of the launch frame uh, according to the instructions, but um, they're very uh, they're very nice and uh, everything is uh, positively uh, appointed so that it fits into the positions and glues in properly. Just make sure that you scrape off any paint that may be on the gluing surfaces to make sure that you get a good uh, a bond with the plastic. Install the launch. Uh, frame to the platform and as you see here uh, this is the completed launch assembly when you're done and add the decals to the uprights there as well for a finished look. Now you can apply the decals to the fuselage and, and tail fin etc and um, don't be afraid to use plenty of warm water and lots of patience to get them into position. Once they're in position Go ahead and coat them with some of that solvent to make sure that they conform to the body of the fuselage. Now we've left the wing off here so that it's easier to put the decals into position. But once those are dry overnight, you can glue the top wing into position on the fuselage there. And once that's set, go ahead and give the entire kit uh, a coat of light uh, clear paint. So you can add the figures if you like or not, it's up to you. I painted the technician uh, that's kneeling down in a white uh, uniform and the uh, inspecting uh, army official there or air force official, I guess, at the time uh, in a uh, medium blue. So put those into position and uh, well, there you have it. You're done. Uh, and this delightful subject matter kit which is a reminder of that Cold War era, uh, also reminds us of how much money we spent for security. Uh, this was only deployed for three years and gave way to the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile System. But it was a stopgap measure and the U.S. felt uh, it was needed for national security. But when you're done, uh, it's a really nice looking kit. You can do a lot to make this uh, improved. Um, you know, some seam work and even some weathering would help. Uh, but it's up to you to finish it the way you like. Nonetheless, I think that uh, if I were you, I'd go out and buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can always find us on Facebook and our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks!